Thank you, Hugh, and a very good evening to you wherever and however you're listening to us with Talk Sport at this World Cup. Match number 50 of the tournament and match number 1,000 in the senior career of one Lionel Andres Messi. 788 goals in his previous 999 appearances for club and country, but not only is a World Cup missing off his stellar CV, but also a goal in the knockout stages of this tournament. This time four years ago, France beat the Albi Celeste 4-3 to send Argentina packing, as well as their coach, Jorge Sampaoli. Enter another Lionel, Scaloni, who was under pressure early on here when Saudi Arabia won 2-1 on match day one, but what a recovery to top the group. And what a recovery by Australia too. They also lost their opener here to the French before back-to-back 1-0 wins saw the Socceroos through to their first round of 16 game in 16 years. The days of Viduka, Kewell et al. They've never made the quarter-finals. Coach Graham Arnold was an Aussie player the only time they beat today's opponents. That was way back in 1988. Team U sees one change for either side. Angel Di Maria has not been risked. He has lined up as one of these substitutes for Argentina, but he was taken off in the win against Poland. His place goes to Alejandro Gomez, Emiliano Martinez, the goalkeeper, Nahua Molina, Christian Romero, Nicolas Otamendi, and Marcos Acuna in the back four. Rodrigo de Paul, Enzo Fernandez, and Alexis McAllister in midfield. Messi up front along with Julian Alvarez, Alejandro Gomez. One change for Australia. Keanu Bacchus makes his first start for his country. He displaces Goodwin. So it's Matthew Ryan in goal. A back four of Milos Degenek, Harry Suter, Kyle Rouse and Aziz Behic. Matthew Lecky, Aaron Moy, Jackson Irvine and Keanu back as the midfield four. Riley McGree in behind Mitchell Duke up front. Our referee is from Poland, Mr. Simon Marciniak. And he refereed Argentina at the last World Cup when they could only manage a 1-1 draw in their opening fixture against Iceland. The countdown clock reaches zero on the video screens around us and Jackson Irvin gets us underway as Australia in their green shorts, gold shirts and white socks are attacking the goal to our left-hand side. Argentina in their traditional blue and white stripes, black shorts and socks. And Australia win an early throw down the right-hand side and Degenic is detailed on it. Maybe a long throw to come into the Argentinian box early on. 30 seconds gone here in the Ahmed Bin Ali Stadium, but we might as well be in Buenos Aires. Long throw from Degenic into the near post, heading clear, and Messi gets his first touch, trying to guide it out to the left hand side. It's just held up for a moment, and it goes back to the back four, and Otamendi will tidy up and look for his central defensive partner, Christian Romero. Now Molina at right back sends the ball up to halfway but won't quite stick with Julian Alvarez and Australia get the throw. Minute gone, nil nil, Dean Saunders. Well I come to the stadium hoping that Argentina win it, win the World Cup because of Messi. And after I can see how many fans they've got here compared to Australia, I want Australia to win. <laughs> this would be a turnover. But we, we didn't know how they were gonna line up, but Messi's playing right up the front as a number nine. They're playing 4-3-3. Alvarez is playing right of Messi and Gomez is playing on the left with three midfield players. Yeah, the central of those three appears to be Alexis McAllister, although he's just drifting left. Enzo Fernandez will take over that role. Great emerging start. Didn't feature in the qualifiers at all, Enzo Fernandez, but he's already scored here at this World Cup. In position, though, is Nahua Molina, the right back, guides it back to Tottenham's Christian Romero. And now Emiliano Martinez, all in cherry red tonight, the Argentine goalkeeper. Acuna tries to send the ball down the right-hand side, he's been challenged by Lecky. Ball's worked up to the mid, the centre circle, controlled by Rodrigo de Paul. Under pressure from Duke, he has to force it back to Romero. Argentina have possession inside their own half, Rodrigo de Paul again. Squares left for Otamendi, he just clips it out to his left for Acuna. And it's taken over by Alejandro Gomez, who played in the first game against Saudi Arabia. Allegedly at Messi's behest. Back he goes into the Argentina half. Australia, very solid banks of four, 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 two. I mean, surprisingly, um, I never expected that. They're, play, they're actually playing four, four, two. It seems that Jackson Irving is playing 
along with Mitchell Duke up front and you've got Riley McGree playing on the left of a four and Bacchus is playing in central midfield with Aaron Moy of Celtic right hand side chance for Molina at the right back to get forward but he's turned away and gone back to the halfway line and passed the ball back to Fernandez. now out to Acuna left hand side about 10 yards inside the Australian half of the field three minutes gone goalless on talk score on a big night of live action we're off to I mentioned Christian Romero Spurs we're off to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium later a fury against Chisora now Gomez down the left hand side for Argentina hits the ball against Bacchus claims for handball lots of Argentine players with their hands in the air imploring Mr Marciniak to give a penalty but he's gone back to the goalkeeper and we play on VAR may well check it whilst play continues nil nil yeah well that's where they get dangerous on the edge of your box when the ball goes wide and they shift it from side to side he looked my first instinct was he's kicked that against his arm and he's too close to the ball but the referee's probably getting someone in his ear checking it now Messi comes deep into the centre circle and then leaves it for Rodrigo de Paul run from Molina down the right hand side the right back but it's over here and they'll just let that drift behind the Australians so that they get their first goal kick of the game with four minutes gone on talk sport Ian Danter and Dean Saunders with you at the Ahmad Bin Ali Stadium which is almost exclusively Argentinian by support well I mean <clears throat> I'd never expect anybody to play 4-4-2 against Argentina just because they're playing with three in the midfield and you've got Messi dropping off as well at some point they're going to dominate the centre of the pitch well, Mitchell Duke is it just to a foul I think it's the pull he's gone down in a heap in the centre circle they both went for a 50-50 it will be an Argentine free kick Australia's only win against Argentina came in that meeting I mentioned in their bicentennial celebrations July 1988 not only did Graham Arnold play in that but a young Diego Simeone won his first cap for Argentina that night as well finished 4-1 to the Socceroos They've not beaten Argentina since and it's Otamendi in the back four squaring the ball to Romero the pitch looks a little pockmarked down beneath us there's been a lot of football played in this World Cup at this stadium and there are signs of a bit of wear and tear out there Dean Saunders yeah I was here for Wales and England so you know that finished uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we were we wore the pitch out is Otamendi playing a little one-two down the left-hand side with Alexis McAllister trying to burst past Degenek but the right back for Australia stuck to his task well puts it out of play Australian throw six gone on talk sport nil-nil they're doing okay I mean Australia they've not got really near the the goalkeeper yet but I'm sure Messi's trying to get in that number 10 right as we speak he's he's, he's right in the center of the pitch as you said earlier walking but he you know he, he'll come short have a touch in the build-up and then he'll drift wait till someone turns their back and he's in there like lightning Rodrigo de Paul on halfway for Australia for Argentina Australia finding it very hard to get hold of the ball just now it's back with Otamendi pass through the center circle to Alexis McAllister Messi passed into by Bacchus as he released the pass free kick for Argentina and a little warning from the referee to Keanu Bacchus on his first start for his country the Samira midfielder free kick to Argentina at 0-0 nothing wrong with that if you were playing against Messi you can't just let him have the freedom of the pitch if you get a chance to get contact on him you've got to do it free kick's been worked back into the Argentina half find out to this near touchline where Noel Molina will control it plays it infield to DePaul oh DePaul expected Molina to start a shuttle run down the right but he just stayed put and the ball's just rolled out of play for an Australian throw Australia won their last two games by a goal to nil remember they've won just two of their first 17 World Cup fixtures and those were their first group stage win was against Japan back in 2006 when they got to the round of 16 in the days of Mark Viduka, Mark Schwarzer and Harry Kuehl amongst others here is 
Christian Romero of Tottenham for Argentina gets it to the halfway line sends it to Molina on the right hand side but a poor first touch allows Riley McGree to get a touch back Ryan clears strongly left footed up to halfway Duke goes up with Christian Romero but Romero easily won that 50-50 challenge yeah, it's like running into a cement mixer there Romero he's just solid McAllister teases the ball down the left hand side Alvarez nods it down out to the left hand side it goes works in field to DePaul spreads play to this near side the Argentina right and Molina but he goes backwards of square to Enzo Fernandez now DePaul again Messi just tries to lay off to McAllister Fernandez once more a square ball to the left hand side and Acuna now Gomez tight to the far touch line but Australia have got everybody behind the ball as it's passed through to Alexis McAllister trying to weave his way clear of Keanu Bacchus square ball might be picked off by McGree and now a free kick's been awarded by the Polish referee for too much attention by Keanu Bacchus on the Argentine midfielder and they've got a free kick the Albi Celeste just ahead of the centre circle almost at the midway point of the Aussie half they've worked it out left to Alejandro Gomez trying to isolate Degenek gets to the left hand corner of the box right footed pull up to the edge of the area Messi took a poor first touch which is rare for him Australia try and clear one back almost immediately by Argentina inside the Australia half Enzo Fernandez takes over long ball over the top looking for Alvarez into the area down the left hand side but he couldn't collect it as it bounced frustrated he bounces the ball as it goes over the dead ball line for an Australia goal kick nil nil on talk sport nine minutes gone great run from Alvarez there it's just a bad touch when he got through he got he, he timed his run perfectly but they're actually not playing with a striker Messi's not you know sometimes he stands up front sometimes he goes deep into the back four to get the ball what Australia have to do is make sure they don't become passive when they're all behind the ball because normally when you can wear these teams down by keep shifting the ball from side to side eventually 70 minutes gone in the game they stop pressing you on the edge of the box this, this it's a yard short 87 percent possession so far in these opening 10 minutes for the Argentinians but it's still scoreless Carl Rowles of Hearts squares it to his other centre half the giant Harry Suter of Stoke long ball down the right for Lecky well, he brought it down it seemed well enough but it just trickled off the outside of his boot and went out for an Argentina throw level with the edge of their own penalty area left hand side 0-0 the score clips up to halfway McAllister brings it down on his chest Gomez is fouled by Moy but the referee says play on as Argentina still have possession Messi inside his own half wriggles away from Rowles and then just flicks it to his immediate left for McAllister now Fernandez takes over hits a ball into out left to right but it's over hit in actual fact intended for Molina throwing to Australia 0-0 well Messi's got the ball there in the centre circle with his back to goal and he's got Moyes trying to kick him but he turns that sharply changes direction he's gone before you can kick him that's Dean Saunders alongside me Ian Dancer former Wales international Liverpool Derby Villa striker amongst many others we're watching on as a packed Ahmad Bin Ali Stadium full of 95% Argentine parties and support watches on as Molina hooks the ball downfield asking Alvarez to give chase he does superbly to protect it from Moy now he's moving into the centre of the Australian half still going right a couple of challenges across comes Behic the left back does really well to steal the ball off him and clear it downfield and it goes out just for an Argentine throw on this near side 0-0 great defending Australia's problem is when they step out and try and score and they get out of shape while they're set in the shape 4-4-2 they look quite solid but the minute they start sending bodies forward you think Messi's going to drift into the holes that start appearing everybody bar Emiliano Martinez inside the half to our right here with Argentina attacking the end where quite a few Australian supporters are in fairness to them but they are severely outnumbered here tonight here is Otamendi and Romero exchanging passes via Enzo Fernandez. Molina now picks it up just shy of the halfway line early ball through the middle looking for Alvarez but he was offside as he just timed his run too quick to get ahead of 
Harry Souter and it's an Australian free kick. Australia lost just one of their last eight games. That was the opener against the French when they took the lead in actual fact through Goodwin in that game and they've won six of those eight and five clean sheets in their last 16 Saunders. Solid defence and work rate. Defenders who like defending and they've got wide players who run back and strikers who work hard. Bo's got a chance. Suter fires the ball up to halfway really asking a lot of Mitchell Duke to control that and he couldn't really and it's straight back into Australia, uh, Argentinian possession once again inside their own half. Fernandez takes the ball off Christian Romero, then plays it backwards of square to Otamendi. Lecky couldn't intercept the pass. It's out with Acuna on the left-hand side. There were thoughts that Acuna might be replaced by Nicolas Tagliafico at left-back. Not to be. He's out there once again wearing the Argentine number eight now on halfway little ball around the corner attempted by McAllister handball given against Bacchus free kick taken quickly by the South American side Messi on halfway lays it back to Fernandes and the roar goes up Argentina fans all around the stadium bouncing in unison incredible noise but they've not given the team haven't given the supporters too much to shout about just yet now a heavy challenge from Jackson Irving on Acuna on the far side will produce the first yellow card of the night and it goes to Jackson Irvine of Australia, 0-0 the score well that's another problem you've got the fouls start mounting up then you start getting players with yellow cards who can't have to shadow box they can't stick their foot in because one more and they're off and that can grind you down but at the minute I'm looking you know we happen to be in line with the Australian back four and they keep that back four keeps moving out and the goalkeeper's right on the edge of his box as well right behind him in case anything comes through they look solid nil nil quarter of an hour gone on talk sport in a very noisy Ahmad bin ali stadium here's enzo fernandez into the center circle for messi who's dropped deep and fires it out to rodrigo de paul who's playing inside right for the moment being pressurized has to go in field. Behic trying to close down the space. Alejandro Gomez now on the left hand side for Argentina. Cuts in field. Squares the ball for DePaul. DePaul will go out right to this near side for Molina. Molina trying to play the ball down the right hand side of the box. It comes back to him off Behic. Now it's Fernandez once again. DePaul takes over almost level with the Australian penalty area. Again he looks backwards to square for Fernandez. Now a square ball for Gomez Acuna takes the ball in field very very patient from Argentina trying to pick the lock De Paul again just ahead of the halfway line goes back to Otamendi Australia with his very regimented back four it's like the old George Graham velvet rope Arsenal back four where everybody is in a perfect line of stern here's Alvarez though trying to break that line down the inside right channel for Argentina. 0-0 the score if you're just tuning in to World Cup Live this Saturday evening. Don't forget, it is Fury against Chisora 3. The trilogy unfolds at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium straight after this commentary on Talk Sport. Now Gomez coming in field and trying his luck from the left-hand corner of the penalty area. But it sailed high, high over the crossbar. And it's an Australian goal kick, 16 and a half gone. It's 0-0, nil Dean nil, Saunders. Yeah, patient play from Argentina, but it, if you watch closely, every time the ball goes wide, they always have a diagonal runner in behind the fullback. Someone always makes that run unselfishly. They either pull a centre half out the middle or uh, they take a midfield player out the way. Poor touch from Jackson Irvine allows DePaul to win the ball back for Argentina. Lost it to the area. Messi just intelligently nods it out to the left where Gomez takes over gives it back to Messi left hand corner of the box he flicks it back into midfield for Fernandez. ball over the top looking for Messi once again but the giant Suter wins the header Degenet heads it out to the right back area hooks it downfield it will stay in play Duke fighting for possession with Acuna won't win that chested down very neatly and calmly by Enzo Fernandez. Australia need another ball out there to play with yeah and they sit back in his shape again 4-4-2, four, four, two, two strikers stood really close together, letting the ball go out to the full-backs, not letting Argentina come through the middle.
Messi's lingering offside now. He'll find a way of getting on the ball. He either goes deep, he goes wide, he goes in the pocket, or he, he's right now, he's standing offside walking. As the ball is with his goalkeeper, Emiliano Martinez, plays it out to the right-hand side, but Molina's dispossessed. Now Australia have possession in a decent area. Riley McGree down the left-hand side. Gives it back to Behic. McGree again. Tosses it further down the left-hand side towards the corner flag. Jackson Irvine passes into the edge of the area. Chance for Behic to get to the byline. Goes down under pressure. Goal kick to Argentina is the call from the Polish referee. That's the first time in these opening 20 minutes that we've seen Australia in the Argentinian defensive third, but it's still nil-nil. I thought penalty for a second. You know, they've got down the left-hand side, drove into the box. Well, VAR has not had a look because we're already back underway with the goal kick for Argentina. McAllister plays a swift ball back to Acuna, had to hurry the clearance, and Degenek did well, despite injuring himself, to win the ball on halfway. Moy finds Backus. Oh, Backus couldn't take the ball with him, almost trod on the ball and allowed Argentina to win back quick possession inside their own half. 19 minutes gone on TalkSport at the World Cup. Messi for Argentina. Back into the centre circle for Fernandez, who's seeing a lot of the ball in that central midfield area. Has it once again. Messi's an option just along the halfway line next to the centre circle. Now Messi drifting into the inside left channel. Has got Acuna out there. Gomez has gone through the middle this time. As the ball goes out to the left-hand side of the area, tidied up by Degenek and back for the former Brighton keeper Matthew Ryan square ball along his own six yard line for Carl Rowles who does well to clear it nodded in field by McGree bit of head tennis between him and Mitchell Duke now it's taken down on the chest by Duke but that allowed Molina to get a foot in and once again Argentina have possession back nil nil I don't get that why would you not take a risk sending bodies forward but then your goalkeeper plays a ball across his own six yard box from a goal kick and that's a massive risk against Argentina. Balls in the possession of Enzo Fernandez once again. Just to his right is Christian Romero. Under a bit of pressure from Jackson Irvine, he managed to work it back to Emiliano Martinez, who's making his 23rd appearance, made his debut only last June, the Aston Villa goalkeeper. Kept six clean sheets in the qualifiers to get Argentina here. They finished in the top two with Brazil. McAllister loses possession on the right-hand side. Now Keanu Bacchus. A bit of pressure from Gomez. Almost dispossessed. 25 yards out, but it's back with Harry Suter. Squares it inside his own penalty area for Carl Rowles. He looks up. Won't play a ball downfield. Instead, he gives it back to his goalkeeper, Matthew Ryan. Nil-nil. Romero and Otamendi, Argentina centre-backs could put an armchair out there at the moment light a cigarette up they're just watching the game but you have to say Australia defending well here is Backus stroking it out to the right hand touchline where it's kept in play by Degenek now Aaron Moy playing his club football for Celtic now was at Huddersfield Town in their Premier League era under David Wagner left hand side as is Behic Back for Rowles, and he'll square the ball for Harry Souter. And under a bit of pressure from McAllister, goes back to his keeper once again. He looks downfield to this near side, the Aussie left, and Behic. Behic just had to run in field, scurry away from a couple of blue and white shirts, and give the ball out to his fellow fullback, Degenek, on the right-hand side. Aaron Moy, got a bit of space inside his own half to measure a pass to somebody. Goes into the centre circle for McGree. He tucks it out to this near side, the left, and Jackson Irving. The whistle starts to go up around the stadium as Argentina haven't had the ball for 10 seconds. Suter, inside his own half, lays it off for Moy once again. Back it goes to Harry Suter. And then all the way back to Matthew Ryan. They're being very, very patient. Not taking too many gambles, Australia. Now Rowles into Moy, but Rodrigo De Paul was right on top of him. Ryan clears as De Paul continues his run. Now there's a bit of space for Moy to drive forward in possession towards the halfway line, which he does. Fires it forward, 15 yards to Backus. Backus has got Degenek on the right-hand side. Moy once again 
Three Australian players at the edge of the area waiting for a cross if it comes, but Moy is coming back to halfway instead at 0-0. Well, they're playing keep ball, Australia, but I think the manager's probably shouted on, let them have it. Irvine finds Leckie, right-hand corner of the area, tries to whip a cross in, goes out of Acuna, and Australia at the first corner of the match, midway through the first half on TalkSport, 0-0. Argentina just suck it, just sucking them in there. They just, the, instead of, like, attacking... 10 players they've just said right drop off let Australia have the ball let the fullbacks join in leave them have the ball for a bit and we're going to pounce on them but what Australia have got to do is not try and play through midfield they've got four in there against their two they've got to get it to the fullbacks and then hit the strikers Aaron Moy to take this right wing corner for Australia raises his left arm right footed out swinger to come up go the heads it's headed out by Otamendi, it'll come straight back to that right-hand side and Aaron Moy, who's got support from McGree, may send the ball back in himself, he does, left-footed, but it's too high for anybody in green and goal, and he goes out of play after two bounces for an Argentine goal kick, 0-0 on TalkSport midway through this first half, Dean Saunders. Um, well, I just think Argentina are just sort of toying with Australia a little bit and trying to find out where they're going to crack, because... They look quite solid when they sat in this shape. But the minute Australia go forward, Moy and Bacchus, who are playing in the centre of midfield, if they empty that midfield by being on the ball out wide, they're going to get counter-attacked. It's a matter of time. Plenty of live football to come tomorrow. Don't forget, England against Senegal, 7 o'clock tomorrow. Build-up right across the day here on TalkSport, including the weekend sports breakfast live here in Doha with... Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino and live games on TalkSport 2 tomorrow England Senegal is here on TalkSport at 7 but at lunchtime tomorrow you've got a bit of League 1 action at Adams Park Wickham against Portsmouth and then France against Poland for the round of 16 is live on TalkSport 2 at 3 o'clock in possession for Australia Kyle Rowles it's his football in the <laughs> Scottish Premiership for Heart of Midlothian making these just seventh international appearance for the Socceroos tonight Moy again with a little bit of space inside his own half not really being pressurised Alvarez keeping an eye instead on Milos Degenek who's got the ball now gives it back to Moy as he gets up just shy of the halfway line for Australia rolls his foot on the ball plays the square ball to Jackson Irvin oh the ball from Irvine back to Moy wasn't the best so he ended up passing the ball all the way back to Matthew Ryan who having left right now plays his football for SC Copenhagen in the Danish league. Degenek, right hand side, plays a firm ball down the touchline where it's protected by Bacchus and he wins the throw off an Argentine defender. It's nil nil and they've negotiated 25 minutes. Is that the right way to describe it? Excellent. Yeah, I think they've been, I've been surprised really. You know, in two banks of four, two strikers dropping down the middle. They've not, they've not been, been played through the middle of the pitch one concern Matthew Ryan looks like you know he, he's looking for something else just do it simple I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a mistake with he, the ball at his feet he's just laid it off simply for Harry Suter hits a diagonal ball right to left seeking out Jackson Irvine who will head it on down the left hand side McCree takes over gives it back to Irvine left hand corner of the box rolls it back to Behitch who's moving in field tries to toe poke it into the area he was looking for Mitchell Duke but the Argentine defence whacks it away nil nil I mean, who's that Argentinian number 10? He's just walking about. I mean, the ball's got kicked towards him there. If it was anybody else in the world, you'd have to say, any chance you running after that? Mehic running after this for Australia down the left-hand side. Can he keep it in play at the byline? He can, but his cross is dealt with well enough by Argentina. And then Rodrigo de Paul wins a throw off Irvine, and it's a throw down this near side, 0-0. I get dragged off for that. <laughs> That's what Messi done there. Fullbacks clipped the ball down to the channel to him. It was about an inch to the side of him. And he's gone, no, I'm not bothering with that one. Just let it run through. He's now level with Paolo Maldini on 23 World Cup appearances. And were they to get through to the quarterfinals, he would then go level on 24 appearances with the two Germans, Miroslav Klose and Lothar Matthäus, who both got 24 World Cup appearances in their career. What a midfield that was. Mateus, Sammer, 
Scott Kessler. Incredible. Australia in possession down by the corner flag and Jackson Irvine's won Australia's second corner of the game. Just span and fist it against Molina. You can only put it behind. Nil-nil. Australian corner. This is the this is the best chance of scoring. Set plays for me. You can get six players in the box. And you've Good got delivery. a delivery. Six foot six in Harry Souter. Yeah. Who's already got his fair share of international goals. Six in his first 13 caps he's waiting inside the area ball sent over by McGree Suter's there knocks it down to the six yard line hurriedly cleared away by Argentina well he got his head on it but couldn't get the power no and it looked as if he headed it into somebody's arm it's just bounced the wrong way ball down the right hand side of the box and Leckie for Australia now running out towards the corner flag on the far side being hassled and harried and had the ball taken off his toe quite brilliantly by Acuna and then a foul by Leckie allows Argentina to reset and have the free kick in their left back position 28 and a half minutes gone you're listening to talk sport at the World Cup Ian Danter and Dean Saunders with you it's Argentina nil Australia nil you've got to say Australia are doing really well massive underdogs they look like as well when they do win the ball back they go forward with a bit of purpose they're not half-hearted they are sending four or five forward now it's out to the left hand side for Argentina. Ball in field is dealt with comfortably by Suter, keeping it away from McAllister. Little dummy from Degenek to keep it away from Alvarez. And it's ball, the ball is back with Matthew Ryan. He clips it back out to Degenek, the right back. And he runs into McAllister, who kept it in play, but that allowed Degenek to win it back. Long ball downfield from Suter, straight onto the head of the Argentina defence. And now Messi has it. Chance to run at the back line, maybe. Now Moy trying to get goal side of him. Messi actually hits the ball against Bacchus. Argentina lose out. Australia try and bring it clear through Duke. What a challenge from Romero just on the halfway line to stop Duke getting any further. And once again, Argentina trying to assume control. The possession stats have changed a bit. It's more like 61-39 now in Argentina's favour. They had over 80% of the ball in the first 10 minutes. But Australia have evened things out a touch. But here come... Argentina again, Messi drifting towards the edge of the area, Bacchus gets an important foot in once again and McGree just elects to put it out of play, passing straight to his manager at the edge of the technical area for an Argentina throw, 0-0. Nil -nil. Well, what's the best way to beat a low block? Let him have the ball, let it turn into something else and let him get out of shape. So sometimes Argentina let him have the ball. They're trying to like encourage him to come up the pitch and then they'll dart in behind you. Messi again, midway point of the Australian half. Once again, he's dispossessed by Keanu Bacchus. Duke inside his own half, he's got runners ahead of him. One of them is Lecky. tries to win the header. Duke has it again, headed on for Riley McGree, just lofts the ball away from Acuna and runs down the left-hand side. He was caught by Acuna. And Riley McGree's won Australia a free kick, only about 20 yards inside Argentine territory, to the right-hand side, with half an hour gone at nil-nil. Yeah, twice. I know we keep talking about Messi, but you can't take your eyes off him because we know what he's capable of. And as Hugh said before the game, it took him a long time to get in that number 10 spot, facing on the half turn, facing the opposition's goal. And he's, he's done it twice so far in this game, and it's fizzled out. Argentina holding a very high line with this free kick. They're a good 25 yards out as they set up. Aaron Moy standing over the free kick for the Socceroos. Only Messi is the notional wall 10 yards away from him. Moy addresses the ball. Right footed ball deep to the far post. Over everybody's head. Leckie went down inside the box. But no claims for a penalty and instead it's an Argentina throw on this right hand side. 31 minutes gone now. Still goalless. Still Argentina yet to test Matthew Ryan in this game, Dean Saul. No, they're doing really well. And oh, Argentina there just holding a real high line. When when teams hold that line, I always feel the free kick taker has to hang the ball right out the back with hang time on it so someone can make a run right round the back and he's got time to get on the end of it. If you whip it in, you've got no chance of getting on the end of it. Here's Enzo Fernandez for Argentina on the halfway line. Options left and right. Flicks it to his right for Molina. Now it's with Alejandro Gomez, the one player brought into the starting lineup by Lionel Scaloni tonight for the 
injured apparently Angel Di Maria but he is amongst the substitutes Di Maria now left hand side Ball's played in field for Alexis McAllister finds Rodrigo to fall 30 yards out but an important foot in from Mitchell Duke headed away by Rowles Duke helps it on a little further Molina gets there ahead of his man but then Keanu Backus has had a very good last five minutes or so defensively in midfield wins the ball once again for Australia but it's back with Argentina intercepted this time by Behic who's been pressurised by Lionel Messi out to this near touch on a McAllister Un. bit of a shoving match between Messi and Behic as the ball went out of play you don't often see Messi's temperature rise but it did as he collided with the Australian left back ends up being an Argentine throw on the right level with the Aussie box 0-0 how dare he, Bear Hitch, squaring up to Lionel Messi. And Shocking. another foul, Bear Hitch has committed a, a free kick now, a bit further down the right-hand side, and taken down Gomez. So this is nearly by the corner flag for Argentina. And the noise increases once again all around this stadium as the blue and white flags are waved, the arms are aloft. A big chance for Argentina here to test... Australia's defensive resolve. Messi, of course, is standing over the free kick. It's only about, I would say, eight yards from the dead ball line on this near side the right, and about three or four yards in from this near touch line. But it'll be a left-footed ball whipped in towards the goalkeeper by Messi. Well, they managed to quieten the crowd down, but if you give silly fouls away like that, what do you expect? Let's see what Messi can deliver here. Ryan waits just ahead of his goal line. Messi addresses the ball, whips it into the near post, headed away by Suter, comes out to Gomez who flicks it back out to Messi on this right-hand side, skips away from Agree, passes back to the edge of the area, Messi has it again, goes for goal, Messi! Lionel Messi celebrates a grand worth of games with a grand old finish, past Matthew Ryan and Argentina are on their way at the Ahmad Bin Ali. After a dominant opening half hour, they hit the front inevitably through Lionel Messi and his 94th international goal. It just had to be him. Argentina won, Australia nil. Well, incredible. That happened in a flash. But Berhic giving a foul away or out on the touchline when a player is facing away from the goal gives a Messi a chance to put the ball in the box it gets headed up back out to Messi and all of a sudden as it's come out to him he's just gone pop 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 one two left foot bottom corner round the keeper it's in the net before you could see what a finish just had a bit of space through the legs of Suter Ryan couldn't get near it and Lionel Messi the first Argentine player to represent his country at five World Cups now finally has a goal in the knockout stages of the World Cup to add to his collection and as smooth and as silky a finish as you would come to expect from the man yeah but from a defensive point of view they look really comfortable and Behic he has a square up with Messi and I think he lost his temper and 10 seconds after the square up he gives a stupid foul away and they end up conceding a goal from it Argentina 1 Australia 0 live on talk sport and the ball is going to be given back to Argentina for a free kick bang on halfway. that will settle a few nerves around it there was plenty of singing and chanting but I'm sure those Argentine fans would have been looking at the score at 0-0 creeping towards half time and if not fearing the worst being a little apprehensive Dean Saunders yeah I mean the ball got headed out to him Messi and he's followed his free kick into the box the, the, a couple of other players played a couple of passes but he followed in as if he's expecting the ball to come to him no room at all shifts it out of his feet rolls it in the bottom corner now Australia have got to dig in till half time don't concede another one they're still in this game a yellow card for an Australia for Degenek on the right hand side for a headed challenge on Acuna which 
as far as the Polish referee was concerned, was a little too physical. So a second yellow card for Australia tonight. Milos digging it. Well, they've got to watch that, the, the, the card count, because before long you can't lay a glove on anyone. But he's got, you know, he's got five subs to bring on. So the two bookings have both gone Australia's way. And the ball's back with Enzo Fernandez for Argentina, who lead by a goal to if you're just tuning in to our World Cup coverage here on Talk Sport. Don't forget the big fight comes later. We've just seen a bit of filth from Lionel Messi, from the filth to the fury later. Fury against Chisora 3 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Once we're done here, provided there's no extra time, we'll get straight to Adam Catchell, Gareth A. Davis, Andy Clark and Spencer Oliver. The undercard is already underway over on TalkSport 2 if you're a boxing fan and you want to check that out. Just get the app downloaded for your smartphone and you can swipe between TalkSport and TalkSport 2 so easily. But we'll get you there to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium here on TalkSport after this game in time for the ring walks for the big fight. As the trilogy plays out between Fury and Shizora. Might be a bit nippy there tonight at the old Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I can't wait for that fight. It's live on Talk Sport. It is. We'll get back to that, won't we? I think, after this game. I think we might have to uh, make sure we're listening to the coverage. Might be a bit of a struggle getting away from here, Dean. It's a packed well, house. Well, I have to say, if there's 45,000 fans in here, there's probably 2,000 Australians. 43. Argentinian bouncing now. Just over five minutes to half time. Ryan, the Australian goalkeeper, flicks it out to the right hand side. And Degenek, who's immediately closed down on that far left hand side by Julian Alvarez. And it ends up being a throw for Australia. And as you say, Dean, it's all about Graham Arnold hoping that he can get his team in at just 1 0 down and a chance yeah. to maybe assess what they might be able to do tactically in the second half to make a game of it. Yeah, and don't beat yourself. You know, it's hard enough to win a game of football anyway, but if you beat yourself, which I mean by that is giving stupid fouls away around the edge of your box, goalkeeper passing the ball to their centre forward, someone giving a daft penalty away, getting a red card, you just beat yourself. It's hard enough as it is. That goal, they've had one shot, Argentina. Now, Alvarez can pick it at right-hand side for the Albi Celeste, level with the edge of the area. Got Molina behind him, but he just rolls it back into midfield for DePaul. He spots Acuna in space on the left-hand side. Knocks it back five or ten yards for Fernandez Into the centre circle for Christian Romero. Again, Australia got everybody back behind the ball. It's fired into the feet of Alejandro Gomez. Now DePaul takes over. Australia chasing shadows a little bit at the moment. Fernandez rolls it out to the left-hand side and Acuna. Now Alexis McAllister takes over. Back in the centre circle it goes, and Rodrigo de Paul. Now Messi's come very deep. The goal scorer, the captain, the leader. Plays a little square ball, and then it's worked up to Alexis McAllister. Out to the left hand side, Nakunya. Early ball fired into Messi, trying to wriggle his way towards the edge of the area. Ran into Harry Souter. Suta got it clear, took the ball first and then caught Messi, who's riding around just outside the Australian penalty area. And the Polish referee is going over to take a look. Argentina 1, Australia 0. It must be so difficult to tackle him. His feet are that quick. You know, you stick your leg in and you think you're getting the ball and his feet are that quick. He touches the ball. But again, there, he got into that area between the midfield two centre midfield and the two centre backs which he's trying to get into and he stands still for about 20 seconds in the same spot it must be hard to mark him you, you're looking around thinking he's going to move in a minute and then he just comes to life Otamendi for Argentina who lead by a goal to nil with three minutes plus added time to the break on Talks 4 England tomorrow against Senegal at 7 o'clock build up right the way across the day weekend sports breakfast warm up and beyond will be at box park as well tomorrow getting all the feeling of the england fans ahead 
of a massive game against the African champion Senegal. Seven o'clock kickoff. Adrian Durham, Jim Pramford, Stuart Pearce, and Faker others, your team. And I'll bite for that important, vital round of 16 game for Gareth Southgate's men. Matt Ryan for Australia, inside his own box. Passes out to Suter. Suter clears up to towards the halfway line. Well flicked on by Jackson Irvine. And he'll pick up the second ball. McGree with his back to play. Lays it off at Behic, the left back. Infield it goes to Aaron Moy. Two minutes to half time. Moy looks to find Leckie, who's had a quiet first half. The man who can do it so often for Australia. Can't get past Acuna, but Bacchus does well. Running down the right hand side to try and retrieve a ball that trickled towards the Argentina penalty area. But the South Americans have it back. And they just calm things down and bring it down to walking paces. Enzo Fernandez squares it across the 18 yard line to Molina and now Alejandro Gomez. Gomez looks for Rodrigo de Paul. And Argentina looking to play out time ahead of half time on Talk Sport. Remember, Monday we've got two more games from the round of 16, both on Talk Sport Japan against Croatia followed by Brazil against South Korea. Three o'clock and seven o'clock kickoffs as the round of 16 continues into early next week. Talk Sport, the only radio station bringing you live commentary of every single game at this 2022 FIFA World Cup. Nobody does it like we do it. Back it goes to Emiliano Martinez. We're in the final minute of normal time and he will drive it downfield right-footed looking for Enzo Fernandez who pushed forward but it's sailed over his head and Australia have a throw. Dean Saunders. Well, you know, I'm trying to assess Argentina, how good they are and looking at this, 34, this first 45 minutes Obviously, when you're playing against a team with hardly any ambition to score a goal, they're just defending. It slows your game down a bit. But if I was Brazil watching this, I'd be thinking we can beat these. They're not really hurting us. Australia have possession just outside their own penalty area with Harry Suter. It's the ball against Alvarez, who's scurrying around the penalty area, trying to put off Matthew Ryan as we move into two minutes of minimum stoppage time at the end of this first period. Argentina won. Australian nil. Yep, Lionel Messi. He scored 10 minutes from half time with what was, I think, Australia's first effort on target. Now down the left hand side, Australia try and build inside their own half. Rowles hits the ball against the Paul, who couldn't keep it in play. So it's Australia's throw, taken quickly by Hebehich, thrown back to his keeper Ryan, who's protecting all. Lilac this evening, the Australian goalkeeper. Suter strokes it out to Degenek, the right back. Leckie started to make a run in the inside right channel but wasn't used. It's back with Ryan once again. As I mentioned, only two minutes of minimum stoppage time. As a diagonal ball is hit across from right to left. Bit of space for Aziz Behic here. But he's still inside his own half, the Aussie left back. Moy. Space to drift towards the halfway line in possession for the Socceroos. Irvine pulls out to this near side of the left, that's who Moy looks for. Takes it down on his chest, lobs it down the left-hand side and it'll drift out of play for a throw. And in fact, it's Australia's, uh, Argentina's throw. Didn't go out off a blue and white striped shirt. Christian Romero passes back into his own penalty area for his keeper, Martinez. Stroking it out left by Otamendi to Acuna. Neat and tidy at the back from Australia in possession at the moment. Bit of a higher press from Australia and they've won it back. Midway point of the Argentina half. Backer sent it back to Suter. Eyes on the referee. We're almost out of time at the end of this first half. Riley McGree of Middlesbrough finds Moy. Moy drives it out to the edge of the area. Lecky trying to bring it down on his chest. Got away from Acuna but he couldn't get past Otamendi. And the referee brings the first half to a close. And on the occasion of his 1,000th game for club and country, Lionel Messi scores his first knockout stage goal at a World Cup. Ten minutes from half-time, he stroked the ball home so superbly past Matt Ryan for his ninth World Cup goal. He's now only one behind the great Batty Gold, Gabriel Batistuta, who got ten goals for his country. Can he level it tonight?
Will Argentina have their noses in front? Work to do for Graham Arnold and Australia in the second half. At the break, it's Argentina 1, Australia 0. Lionel you know, Messi about to get things back underway. Indeed he does. And Argentina now kicking as we look down from our lofty perch. Along the halfway line in the second tier of this Aman Bin Ali Stadium, Argentina will be kicking from right to left as we look, as we describe the action to you, wearing their blue and white striped shirts and the black shorts and socks. Australia in their green and gold will be attacking the goal to our right-hand side, where most of the Australian hardcore support is, but they are vastly outnumbered here by the Albi Celeste. Quick run through the lineups. Martinez, the Argentine keeper. Molina, Romero, Otamendi, Acuna at the back. De Paul, Fernandez, McAllister in midfield. Gomez, Messi, and Alvarez up front. For Australia, Ryan the keeper. Degenek, Suta, Rawls, and Behic back four. Lecky, Moy, Irvine, Bacchus, and McGree are in midfield. Duke up front. And two players got yellow cards in that first half. Both for the Aussies, Irvine and Degenek, saw yellow. Ball up to halfway, and Messi just lets it run. McAllister touches it back to his captain. Now it's Alvarez trying to work it out left. He has caught his own foot as he tried to send it out left for Marcus Acuna. Enzo Fernandez in the centre circle, firm pass for Paul. The ball does really well to keep it away from Riley McCree. Now Duke trying to close down the ball, just clips his heels. Free kick to Argentina who lost to France, I mentioned at this stage four years ago. Prior to that, they hadn't lost in the round of 16 since they played Romania at USA 94. All the blonde, peroxide-haired Romanians, you might remember, all got their yeah, hair done the same us. way before the tournament. They knocked us out of Wales yeah. in the last game of the group. We missed the penalty in the 90th minute or something like that. Well, now, a bit of a hurry clearance from Martinez, and Mitchell Duke got something on it because he was right on top of Martinez as he cleared his lines from the edge of his six-yard box and it just screws out on this near side for an Argentina throw down their left. Unlucky. I mean, Martinez, obviously the Aston Villa goalkeeper, he's got on the side of his head, he's got tattooed in the side of his head, blue and white and stripes of Argentina. Do you not think, Dance, that it would be better with Claret and Blue? If he, Aston Villa. If he turns up with blue and white at Villa Park, he's in trouble. But I think it's paint. I'm not Sky sure it's a blue. tattoo. Well, but they don't like commentary. But he's a tattoo. Villa Park is in trouble. Ball's back with De Paul. Flicks it up to the halfway line where Messi's station. Sends it further down the right hand side. Great run from Alejandro Gomez. Just holds his run for a moment. Gives it back to his captain Messi. Messi moves in field to the centre of the Australian half, and then plays it back for Rodrigo De Paul. Gomez now coming in field up to the edge of the area, tries to play a 1-2, comes back for Messi, shovels it out to this near side for Acuna, the left back, again midway point of the Yossi half, under pressure from Bacchus, goes behind to Otamendi, now Alexis McAllister takes over, the pattern of the second half is very much starting to follow what we saw for the vast majority of the first half on Talk Sport. There is a change being ready down beneath us by Argentina, incidentally. We are shortly going to be seeing uh, Lissandro Martinez of uh, Manchester United. Might be an injury problem for one of the two centre-halves. We'll see in a moment. Argentina in possession at the moment. It's out on the right-hand side with Gomez. Gives it back to De Paul. Tries to stroke it to the right-hand side. It's out of play, so let's see who is coming off to allow Lissandro Martinez to come on and it is Alejandro Gomez so it's a, very much a defensive change here Dean Saunders one of the uh, front three is coming off to allow an auxiliary central defender to come on and Lissandro Martinez yeah interesting I don't know what shape they're going to play maybe changing the shape maybe go three at the back so he's on Lissandro Martinez the ball's back with the Australian back four Martinez making his 13th appearance for his country the Manchester United centre half and he looks like he's playing left back at the moment doesn't know what means Acuna is pushing further forward we'll keep our eye on that Australia trying a high press but Australia can't 
collect the ball and Argentina now have it on halfway with Messi releasing the ball down the right wing three waiting for a cross Moy trying to prevent the cross from Rodrigo de Paul as he pulls it back to the edge of the area little touch from the midfielder back to Messi deflected and saved by Ryan the deflection actually helped the Aussie goalkeeper caught an Australian leg inside the D went straight into the chest of the Aussie goalkeeper 1-0 to Argentina well, Australia have tried to press Argentina on the edge of their own box. Moyes ran out in the middle of midfield. They wriggled out of it, broke the press, got down the right, cut back. Who's in the D, waiting for the cutback? Messi, I thought, goal. He's pulled the trigger. He's gone straight at the goalkeeper. It is three at the back. Lissandro Martinez playing on the left of the three. Otamendi in the middle. And Cristian Romero to the right. So they've gone defensive very, very early, Argentina. Well, it depends how far they play their wing-backs up the pitch, because that causes you a problem in a 4-4-2. Here's Jackson Irvine down the left for Australia. Lewis is out, wins it back though, with a bit of help from Behic. Moy turns away from Messi and fires it back into his own half. First Rawls and then the other centre-half, Suter. Degenic now, turns the ball around the corner from the halfway line. Bounces off Matthew Leckie's chest and Alexis McAllister goes to ground under pressure from Bacchus. He's committed another valley. On the old tossing up procedure, Keanu Bacchus might be your yellow card in waiting here for Australia. Yeah, Big I think... To Argentina, 1-0. Graham Arnold's got to keep his eye on Bacchus and Moy because they're in there on their own. There's two of them in there and, and they're all, all the Argentinian players are rotating around them and they've just got to keep the discipline, keep the shape problem is if one of them gets dragged out the middle of the pitch they get popped around in the center Acuna plays the ball down the Argentine left for Alexis McAllister Acuna continued his run infield in kind of an underlap cleared away by the keeper Ryan for Australia but Argentina have it back Fernandez finds Christian Romero good foot in from Harry Suter just stepping out from the back four ball goes up to Riley McGree of middle spray he loses out Argentina have it back again. McAllister quickly flicks it out to the left of Acuna. Run being made down the left-hand side by Alvarez, but he's not being used. He's gone back to the three centre-halves. And Christian Romero now has it. The chance start again. Ball slow back pass. Out comes the keeper, just to keep it away from Mitchell Duke. Otamendi gave Martinez a bit of a problem there but he was simply had to deal with it but he's put out a play for an Aussie throw right wing level with the Argentine penalty area 1-0 to the Argentinians sloppy from Otamendi there he's just turned he had his back to goal he just turned and hooked it too casual lucky and it comes from Degan the long throw comes to be won back by Argentina I just saw a there's a banner somewhere I couldn't quite see where it was featuring Ray from home and away that somebody's <laughs> flown inside here. He used to call everyone flaming galahs. They don't want to be calling themselves that Australia come the end of the night. They want to advance. Australia here did come into the last eight, which they've never done, remember. The round of 16 is as far as they have ever got in their World Cup history, Australia. They trail Argentina by a goal to nil. And we played eight minutes of the second half. And it's a handful down the left-hand side by Riley McGree, and that will be a free kick to Argentina. And it's going to be Emilio Martinez coming outside of his area to take it. Well, what Lionel Scaloni's done is not a defensive move, it's an attacking move. They've now got three at the back, passing it across the back, instead of four against the two strikers of Australia. So they're able to push the wing-backs further up the pitch which takes Australians wingers further back and they, he's obviously not happy with the way they're playing so they can get another body further up the pitch that's Dean Saunders alongside me Ian Danta Dean has been very much with Wales at this World Cup former Wales international striker and Premier League striker part of our commentary team here in Doha at the Ahmed Bin Ali Stadium, Argentina, 1-0 up, nine minutes gone, second half, McAllister, Bright, 
who scored last time out against Poland for his first international goal. Drifting out to the left-hand side, receives it again. Back is trying to close down the space as he has to turn and go back towards the halfway line and feed it back to Nicolas Otamendi. Christian Romero, just over the halfway line, takes a couple of strides forward, turned neatly around the corner by Paul out to Molina in that right wing back position that he's now occupying and then back it goes for the three centre halves and again Otamendi with a better back pass to Martinez that time and a firmer clearance and Messi's giving chase Matt Ryan's come out of his area and Alexa headed out of play on the far side for a throw to Argentina 1-0 taken quickly by Molina and goes out of play for another throw on the far side so the first tactical move Scalini's changed to a back three now Graham Arnold should be shouting on to the two Australian strikers the space is down the sides of the three centre backs so now there's a bit of there's a bit of room for him to make some runs down the sides double change coming for Australia at least I'll give you detail on that in just a second looks like Craig Goodwin is coming on for one of those changes who scored the early goal against the French at the start of this World Cup but Argentina have the ball at the moment on halfway with Enzo Fernandez ball threaded in field to Alvarez clips it out to Messi on the right wing trying to give it back to Alvarez who suddenly got his skates on down the inside right channel but Australia win it back it'll drop though in midfield for Alexis McAllister good fit put in from Keanu Bacchus it's not classed as a back pass as Ryan claims it stays in play so Australian changes will have to wait for a moment back it is with Matthew Ryan two Argentina players closing him down he's lost it and it's put in by Julian Alvarez dreadful dreadful error Matt Ryan trying to play around with the ball inside his six yard box he got dispossessed and Julian Alvarez just casually rolled it into the back of the net for two in two for Argentina and surely they are on their way to meet the Netherlands in the last eight. 57 gone, simple goal, dreadful error, Argentina 2, Australia 0. Matt Ryan, what are you doing? I, I mean, I've seen it coming, Dance, after 10 minutes. Instead of just playing it simple, he's looking for something else and he's done it again. He's thrown the ball out to the left back. He's run back into the middle of his goal. The centre back passes it back to him and he tries to beat two Argentinian players. Just put your foot through the ball. What, who do you think you are? You're a goalkeeper because you can't play outfield. What's he thinking? But I've seen it coming in the first half. He was dilly-dallying it, like, as if he's bored playing in goal. It's a terrible mistake, and that's them, that's them buried. 2-0 to Argentina, just shy of the hour mark. Double change has been made. Ashton Brustic of Verona is on in place of Keanu Bacchus and Craig Goodwin replacing McGree. Double change made and Australia now have to go for it in a way that they have not done up to this point at all. Self-destruct, Dance. Yep. Alvarez just challenged down the left-hand side. Tries to hear after it and then ball put out of play for a throw into Australia. But it's imagine, all imagine going saying this to your kids. I seen a goalkeeper beat two Argentinian players the other day. You go, you never. How's he think he can dribble out like an outfield player? It was a proper pincer movement from Alvarez and Messi. And they got him. 2-0 to Argentina. Claims for handball against an Argentine player flicked on from Mitchell Duke asking Brustic to get forward he forces Otamendi into another shanked clearance that goes out of play for a throw on this near side I think the stadium's in shock at what they've just seen there was no danger but first half I was watching how his mind was working and he's looking for something better than a simple pass and he, you're always in trouble when you're doing that long throw into the box easily dealt with by Argentina Alvarez 
flicks the ball in field, gets it back from McAllister, now looks for Fernandez. Oh, he gets caught by Lecky. Free kick to Argentina. So that double change made. Good winning place for Adelaide United in the Australian A-League. Made his debut nine years ago, but barely picked after that debut until four years ago. And he and Hrustrich are on, and there's uh, at least three up now for Australia. They have to go for broke. There's no other option at this point. 2-0 down with an hour gone on TalkSport. Argentina holding sway. And the ball is with Lissandro Martinez. It's a long ball downfield, asking Alvarez to give chase. Kyle Rowles deals with that, gives it back to Ryan. First time pass from Ryan back out to Rowles. And now Degenet will give it back to the Hearts defender. He put his foot through it. Has to go back to his keeper again, does he? No, he hits it against McAllister. And it goes behind for a goal kick to Australia. Two balls on the pitch just temporarily, but that's dealt with. And Behic on the far side of the field. Goes back to Carl Rowles. And Australia reverting to type then after keeping two clean sheets in their last two internationals. They've not been the clean sheet kings at all in recent times. To five and six before that, they were conceding plenty in the qualifiers, but here they are at the World Cup, now needing to score twice just to force extra time. Irvine finds Aaron Moy down the left-hand side, flicked by Behic further down the left-hand side. This really goal sets forward and a foul on Behic as he's lying down on the turf. And it's Christian Romero who brought him down. So a free kick to Australia down the left-hand side of the penalty area. 2-0 down they are. Again, Romero, you know, this it's lunged in. No need for it. They've just gone 2-0 up, and now you've given Australia a chance, a lifeline, to put a ball right in the middle of his six-yard box. In swinger. Moy's going over there to take it. The big centre-backs have come up. Yeah, Moy, the obvious man to strike. It takes most of the set pieces for the Socceroos. All Romero's got to do there is just stay on his feet. Yeah. Usher the player into the corner flag. Job done. He lunges in. Australian free kick then at 2-0 down. Moy runs over the ball. It'll be sent in. Instead, left-footed, deep to the far post. Hooked back to the edge of the area. Australia will keep possession with Rustic. Works into the centre of the Argentine half for Moy. Diagonal ball out to the far side of the box. Volleyed across the face of goal. Dealt with well by Martinez at the near post. And now Rodrigo de Paul lays it off for Molina. Neat ball from Fernandez. He's looked very adept in that Argentine field. Enzo Fernandez. As someone who's only making his seventh appearance. Looking very much at home. Little flicks and tricks from Messi on halfway to keep the ball away from Aaron Moy that delights the crowd with Argentina firmly in control here at the Ahmad Bin Ali Stadium live on Talk Sport with our exclusive live commentary of Tyson Fury against Derek Chisora to come from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as soon as we're done here we'll be joining Adam Catchell Gareth A. Davis and our commentary team of Andy Clark and Spencer Oliver for the trilogy fight between Fury and Chisora. But this is in danger of being waved off. If Argentina get any more, Australia have got to score, and they've got to score quickly to give themselves half a chance in this round of 16 tie. Messi wriggling away from Suter. Strong run through the centre circle, still going Lionel Messi. Tries to get past Rells, it'll drop for Alvarez, gives it back to Messi. Running through challenge, he's still going and then it's the toe poke out for a corner. And right at the last by Degenet as Messi threatened to carve his way through everybody. Corner kick, 2-0. It's like as if he's got a bit of string on the ball on the end of his toe. It gets away from him, he gets it back, but he's dribbled through the whole team there. 
If he'd have scored that goal, it would have been the best, one of the best goals ever seen in the World Cup. He's run from about 45 yards out, right through the lot. He was certainly moving then. He may stand still a lot of the time, but when he gets going, he's going to receive a short corner here down this left-hand side. He's going to give it back to Rodrigo De Paul. If it's a right-footed ball in, lovely delivery, drops inside the box. Romero couldn't get a piece of it. Cleared away by Lecky. One insane going out to all normal professional footballers playing in Britain. Do not try and play like Lionel Messi and think he can stand still and walk. He's just a genius. He's playing a different game to us. That's Dean Saunders offering the advice to any footballers listening to this on Talk Sport this Saturday night. 2 0 to Argentina. And we played. 65 minutes, so 25 to go. Acuna down the left hand side. Lovely ball into the box. Oh, he just misses out Alvarez in the centre. Brilliant run from Alvarez, and the ball was delicious, but he just couldn't get a touch. Oh, it's a striker's dream that left foot bent around the defence. Messi, 25 yards out, goes for goal, lifts it high over the bar. Goal kick to Australia. I bring him off for that, Messi. <laughs> Lifting that over the bar from that range. Alvarez nearly got on the end of something there though, it was a, a ball, Harry Kane's ball for Sterling, similar type ball, striker's dream, the system's helped them, the wing backs now are pushing the wide players of Australia's 4-4-2, pu it's, it's pushing them right back and stretching the centre of the pitch out, the last time Australia reached the round of 16, it was 2006 when it took a late, late Totti penalty for the eventual World Cup winners Italy to knock out the Socceroos heartache that day but they're two behind here and desperate to get a foothold in this game they've won a free kick I don't know it's a throw though it is a free kick on this near side and Craig Goodwin's just spotting the ball down just in from this near touch line on the right with about 25 yards to the dead ball line. Australia holding their line at the edge of the 18-yard box. Nobody on the making a near post run for, our, for Australia yet. Everyone's at the far post waiting for the ball to come in. Now a few runs to the near post. Comfortable claim though by Martinez. As there is no Australian player within five yards of him. 2-0 to Argentina. Well, yeah, that's the tactic. When you when your defence holds a ridiculous high line when the wide free kicks are coming in, which you see most teams doing now, what it does do, it allows your goalkeeper to come five yards further out and come and catch anything that's inside that line. You're listening to Talk Sport at the World Cup. Every single game, live and exclusive. Across the network, Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. Nobody else is bringing you commentary on all 64 games. This is match number 50, so we're well over halfway. And England play tomorrow night against Senegal. Build up right from when you wake up in the morning on Talk Sport with the weekend sports breakfast. Natalie and Tony Cascarino with you live here in Doha. Then build up across the day, culminating in build up from inside the Albright Stadium from 6 p.m. with Adrian Durham, Stuart Pearce, and Jim Proudfoot, your team. In England, Senegal. Before that, on Talk Sport 2, you got a double bill of live commentaries from League One, Wick and Portsmouth at 12.30. And then at 3 o'clock from the World Cup here in Qatar, France against Poland. Argentina 2, Australia 0. Into the last quarter of the game. And Australia have so much to do. Ball's back with Otamendi inside the D. Plays it out left for Lissandro Martinez. Drives the ball down the left-hand side of Cunha, giving chase. Oh, he's got the better of Degenet. No, he's fouled him to get the better of him, says the Polish referee. He was away and clear inside the box, left-hand side, until the whistle stopped him. Yes, definite foul. Just clipped down the channel. But the system's helped Argentinians football. But... Um, Australia, if they must be thinking now on a positive note, if we can just get a goal now, can we nick an equaliser? They're in possession with Carl Rowles, the centre-half, it's a long ball downfield, 
looking for Lecky to flick it on. It's tidied up at the back by Martinez. Ball further clear by Acuna down to this near touchline, the Argentina left. Ball in field, and there's one back by Hrustic, but he, they couldn't keep it in play, the Socceroos. And there is going to be another change for Graham Arnold's men. Tim Cahill watching on there. Yes, he's here tonight. I don't know whether he's got anything to do with the he Australian FA. He's is part he? of the Aspire Academy that's helped Australian stars come through. Of course, he was part of that 2006 vintage Australian side that did get to the round of 16. Midfield player who ran into the box and scored goals. Fantastic header of the ball. Great in the air. I think I can see Jamie McLaren was getting ready to come on there. We're number nine for Australia, but I want to throw meantime. Jackson Irvine is dispossessed. Graham Arnold paces around the edge of his technical area as his substitutions get ready to come and it's actually going to be a, a triple change the problem he's got dance the toolbox he's been given incidentally there's a double change for australia for argentina as well and alvarez having scored that second goal that was gifted to him by matt ryan he comes off and lautaro martinez of inter milan comes on and also Nicolas Taliafico he's going to come on in place of Acuna so light for light in terms of the left back position and up front so we've got two Martinez's out there now who's this one play for Inter Milan it is yes Lataro Martinez wearing number 22 for Argentina the change for Australia well, the players coming on are Fran Karacic of Brescia also as I mentioned Jamie McLaren is on there and also Garan Kuol who's only 18 years of age and is heading for Newcastle United in January deal was signed so he joined the Magpies in the upcoming transfer window and he's playing up front and the players going off were Lecky, Duke and Degenek so a triple change for Graham Arnold and Australia they've got to go for it and they've only got what 20 minutes less than that to save themselves ball come Australia lovely touch from Latano Martinez but across came a challenge from Karatic his first involvement is to Stop Lautaro Martinez bursting through the middle. Martinez is a great player. I mean, you look at the options the, the manager's got of Argentina. He brings on three players Man United, Leon, Inter Milan. Then the Australian manager, Graham Arnold, when he's trying to make changes, the players he's putting on are not as, as, not as good as the ones that were on there. Whereas it's the other way around for Argentina, they've got players who are better than the ones on the pitch ball down the right hand side McLaren giving chase will he keep it in play he can he hooks it into the Argentinian penalty area but it's dealt with by the home defense headed up in the air by Irvine but out comes Martinez in a comfortable claim at the edge of his penalty area and then he does a pickford and drops down and just lands on top of the ball to kill a few seconds 73 and a half minutes gone on talk sport Argentina 2 Australia nil as Martinez clears from hands asking Lautaro Martinez to give change so three Martinez is out there forgot about Emiliano for a minute don't be having a go at the Martinez the goalkeeper dance just because he plays for Aston Villa <laughs> that wasn't the reason that was not the reason I know your game throw in for Behic for Australia volley downfield up to halfway but a comfortable header further forward Moy wins it back for Australia Good win down the left hand side and Behic wins a throw. But they're in the wrong half of the field, Australia. Well, about now, you know, it's just fingers crossed. He just got to offer a just nick something, a, a corner free kick or a mistake. But they look out of it at the moment. Run out run out of ideas. 
Naples on halfway. Argentina win it back through Tagliafico. Lautaro Martinez gives it back to Tagliafico, driving up to the edge of the area, drags his shot wide. Worth a go, because he was the furthest player forward, nobody up with him. But Tagliafico's drive ends up with an Australian goal kick. 2-0 Argentina. Yeah, Tagliafico just come on. You know, that's his first kick of the ball. He's 25 yards out, bit of an angle on his left foot, and I think he's tried to cut across it, but he's dragged it. The old natural scuff. There's a player down injured for Argentina, but no need for any treatment for Lautaro Martinez, who's back on his feet. 45,032 inside the Ahmad Bin Ali Stadium tonight, and I'll wager a good 40,000 plus of those are wearing the blue and white of the Albi Celeste. Karicic goes up for a header on this near touchline for Australia. Ball's gone out of play for a throw, taken quickly by Hrustic. Two balls on the pitch. Scaloni holds his hand up apologetically. He was trying to get a ball back on the pitch and didn't realise another one had been grabbed. Yeah, Dan, do you know what? Playing out from the back, there's got to be some end product to it. It's just cost them the game, playing out from the back. Yep. You've got you've got to be the reason you do it is to try and get an overload at the other end of the pitch. You've got a four v three on their back four. You don't do it for the sake of it. Bench with a good ball into the box, drops at the edge of the area. A drive deflected it in! They've got one back! And it's Craig Goodwin who's given Australia hope with just less than a quarter of an hour to play. He just took a shy from outside the area and a deflection wrong foot of Emiliano Martinez and maybe it is game on in the latter stages of this round of 16 tie Goodwin with his second goal in this World Cup makes it Argentina 2 Australia 1 well there you go a bit of luck I mean it was just a cross from the left hand side I think Martinez gets his foot on it and it comes out to Goodwin and he's running on to a straight ball half volley 25 yards out massive deflection and goes in the other corner bit of luck they're it back hit, in it it hit Enzo Fernandez on the head and violently diverted past Emiliano Martinez into the bottom corner but Australia won't care how it goes no. in it's in you don't buy a ticket you don't win the raffle 13 to go then and a bit of jeopardy suddenly introduced live on talk sport at the Ahmad Bin Ali here is Lautaro Martinez, finds Enzo Fernandez, the man whose deflected header has given Australia a route back into this round of 16 tie. Goodwin, who's just scored, wins a throw off to Paul. That will give them a, the lift that they need, that little bit of self-belief, Dean Saunders. I honestly think if they can get to 2-2, they'll win on penalties. They'll get through it and win on pens. They've got a chance now. But here's Lautaro Martinez holding the ball up for Argentina superbly. Works in field for De Paul. Now Messi takes over, tries to find Tagliafico, intercepted by Karacic. Teased out by Irvin to this near side, looking for a bit of help from Frostic. But Tagliafico wins it back. McAllister finds Messi. Lays it off for Rodrigo de Paul, he's going to have a go, is he from 30 yards? No, squares it back to Messi, approaching the D, out to the left-hand side and Tagliafico. Can he find a cross to find a teammate? Holds it up for a moment, gives it back to the edge of the area. Messi, back to goal. Feeds Tagliafico again, left-hand side, tries to play the ball in, and it's a mess of legs and it's gone out of play, and the flag's gone up for offside against Tagliafico. Anyway, Australia have a free kick, 12 to play. Argentina 2, Australia 1 on TalkSport. Great tackle from Bacchus, but he's offside anyway, but Messi's just threaded the left back in. Another double change for Australia. Coming off will be uh, Noah Molina, and uh, Gonzalo Montiel is going to come on for him. What you spotted, Dean Saunders? You said Australia. Did I say that? Stop, forgive me, Argentina. Thank you. So, Gonzalo Montiel is on, and so too is Ezequiel Palacios of Bayer Leverkusen in midfield. So, a double change for Argentina, and McAllister is the other player going off along with Molina. 
So there will be, a, with all these changes, of course, that does allow a fair old chunk of stoppage time at the end of the game, doesn't it, Dean Saunders? Yeah, it does. Uh, I mean, they've not really changed their shape. They've made change in personnel, but, I mean, it's just one chance. They just need a chance. It's Karacic playing the ball into midfield. Kuol can't win the header for Australia, but it's cleared to halfway. Goodwin. Neeson ball in field, Behic can push forward now, riding the challenge, gets to the left-hand corner of the box, still going Behic, still Behic! Oh, oh it's my word! The top. It's a corner kick, what a run from Aziz Behic, got all the way into the area and then he was denied right at the last as he wriggled through, a cross came a defensive challenge to put it over the bar for an Aussie corner. What an amazing run! It was a bit like George Best in that video in America. He's chopping through players. He must have beat about five players. He's clean through on the keeper. He could have squared it. Tapping. Keeper saves it. Good wins corner for Australia. Deep to the far post. Comes out to Hrustic. Hrustic goes for goal and it's over the bar. And it's an Argentine goal kick. But what a run from Aziz Behic of Dundee United. Who was denied by a challenge right at the death came in on goal was it Otamendi that made the final challenge amazing stuff it was Sandra Martinez in actual fact that made the important block what a challenge for Martinez I mean he's beat four players chopping it gets it back on his right foot he must be corner of the six yard box and there was a square pass on for him but it, I, you can't expect him to see that when he's on that mazy run everybody and I mean everybody me and Dean included, and Hugh Wizencroft and Izzy and our producer, everybody held their breath just for a moment as Behic looked ready to hit the target. 2-1 Argentina, by no means done yet. We've got nine minutes to play. Holding on an Australian player gives the Socceroos a free kick. And there is definitely a bit of belief coursing through the veins of these Australian players. Well... One thing I was disappointed on with Wales is we went out with a whimper. And Australia are not going out with a whimper. If they do go out, it's not through lack of effort and endeavour. They're trying their best. Moy on the halfway line hits a Hail Mary downfield, looking for Hrustic, but a comfortable claim. For Lisandro Martinez, he drops again with the ball firmly in his grasp just to kill a few seconds. And that goal back for Australia has now been confirmed as an Enzo Fernandez own goal. It's only their second ever own goal at the World Cup after the one if you named Roberto per Perfumo scored an own goal against Italy in the 1974 World Cup. There was not a lot he could have done about that. I mean, no, Goodwin's hit it, sliced it, and it's just that like, he couldn't get out of the way. Argentina to Australia one. Long ball downfield. Garan Kual goes up for a header and collides with Otamendi, who's riding around holding his face. Which Romero, in actual fact, has gone down. But Kual, well, he climbed above Romero and got the head on it. Yeah, he's just got up early, and, and if anything, he's headed his like rib cage it's not an elbow he's now sitting up Christian Romero and he's going to get back to his feet it's been given as an Argentina free kick seven and a half about seven minutes to go now on talk sport at the World Cup Argentina looked to be cruising and they are still as it stands heading through to face an old World Cup foe in the Netherlands as things stand, 2-1 they lead. It's not even given us a free kick, it's actually a throw-in that's been given by Mr. Martini at the referee. Flicked on by Latara Martinez. Rowles sends it downfield. Australia trying to give chase. Romero heads it clear. Good header from Irvine. Again, Romero there this time to get above Kual. And now Messi's being asked to give chase downfield, but he won't catch that before Matthew Ryan gets there and an offside plate went up against Messi anyway Australia free kick but the second's ticking away here heading towards the last five minutes on Talk Sport remember we're off to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium 
for Tyson Fury, Derek Chisora, the trilogy. Fight three between those two, straight after this. But this fight's not done yet. Australia aren't counted out. Grustich, though, dispossessed. Midway inside the Argentine half and forward comes Enzo Fernandez, looking for Lautaro Martinez down the left-hand side of the area. Rolls his man brilliantly into the box, trying to get past Suter. Suter just puts his giant frame between himself, the ball, and Martinez. And the ball goes up to halfway. Kowal chests it down. Brustic now, just shy of the halfway line, has to turn away from trouble. Fires it downfield. He's going to ask the new right-back Karacic to give chase, but he'll won't catch it before it drifts out of play for a throw to Argentina deep inside their own half and they're in no mood to take it quickly as you might expect Argentina four and a half to go plus added time two on Argentina Dean Saunders Martinez showed a bit of class there he's just rolled rolls on the corner of the box I see what you did there but uh, he ends up giving the ball away but um, I said one lucky goal and now it's on a knife edge. Anything could happen in this game. As we almost saw from Aziz Behic with that extraordinary run in from the left-hand side. But for a Lissandro Martinez challenge, who knows whether he would have netted to make it 2-2. As it is, Argentina have that slender one-goal lead and they have a free kick inside their own half. You can only remember John Barnes for a goal he scored. Yes. That goal he scored, Behic would have been remembered for that for the rest of his career. He's got some defending to do, Behic, because it's out on the right-hand side with the new right-wing back, Montiel. De Paul is out there with him. Trying to hold the ball in play on the far side of the field. Being pressurised, comes back towards the halfway line. And then tries to keep it in play on the near third. Loses out, or oh, poor ball from Jackson Irvine. Just gave it away when Australia needed to keep possession inside their own half. Messi plays it that left to Tagliafico. Tagliafico now forced to go back towards the halfway line. Finds Enzo Fernandez. De Paul has got Montiel making a, an overlapping run, trying to find him, but it was intercepted in the nick of time by Behic. Now the ball's back on the halfway line for Argentina. Tagliafico again in bags of space on this left hand side. Instead, it's with. Palacios, not long on as a substitute. Chance for De Paul to have a run to the edge of the area. Plays it through for Latara Martinez. Shot drags wide. Goal kick to Australia. Three minutes to go. Argentina two, Australia one. On talk sport. Great football, great run. Latara Martinez. He's just made a dart into the right channel in the box. Dragged it wide. I remember watching Republic of Ireland were playing Denmark. And Roy Keane and Martin O'Neill were in charge and they were 2-0 down and Ericsson, who's the Messi of Denmark, was going to be left in that hole if they changed the shape. You've just got to accept it. Now, right now, Australia have got to go for it. If Messi picks the ball up in the number 10 and scores, it's just too bad. But that's the risk you take. Yeah, goal difference doesn't matter now. It's all about getting through. Moy loses out on halfway and here is Messi. Running at Carl Rouse, he's got options right and left. Still going messy up to the edge of the area. Lays it off for Lantaro Martinez, blasted over the bar. Terrible effort. Lantaro Martinez clean in front of goal, eight yards out. Skied it. Goal kick, 2-1 Argentina. Well, there you go, there's an example. So, you leave him messy on his own. And the ball breaks, you give it away. He's got it, he puts Martinez in, he can't miss. Lifted it over the bar. Karacic looks for Hrustic on Australia trying to build down the right hand side they want to throw as Lissandro Martinez elects to put it out of play and it's going to be a long throw to come in from Fran Karacic and they're telling Harry Sutar to get in the box for this long throw six foot six of him he's the obvious target gets the flick on drops on the penalty spot just wouldn't quite sit down in the centre of the penalty area it was Jamie McLaren who tried to get a piece of it and now Sutar is having a bit of a, a word with the three centre-halves of Argentina he's outnumbered Martinez has stayed down after he challenged him and we're moving into six minutes of additional time at least 
because we're not going to start play until Sandro Martinez is back to his feet. But that's what we have left. There will be six minutes once the 90 is up. The 90 is nearly done. Martinez will have a free kick inside his penalty area. Argentina fans wave their scarves and their shirts and their flags around their heads in anticipation of the victory. Martinez drives the ball downfield. We've now played the 90 minutes. It's actually seven minutes. We were told six on our panels, but now it's come up for seven minutes of added time. Maybe that little delay for Martinez has changed referee Marciniak's thinking. Throw in for Argentina. Lautaro Martinez tries to roll Karacic down this left-hand side to step inside him. Loses out. And the ball's gone out of play and it'll be an Australian throw. 2-1 Argentina. Strong Martinez. Anything you get too tight to him, you just roll him. Ball played up to Garan Koualo. Won't reach him. to pull intercepted it brilliantly. Messi hugging the right-hand touchline. Koualo trying to close him down. Messi just protecting it oh flicks it in field but then ran into Aaron Moy brilliant skill from Messi but it only ends up being a throw 2-1 Argentina yeah four men round him and he just scooped it over the four of them nearly wriggled out of it but at the other end you know you talk about all the brilliant silky football Australia have nearly scored from a long throw flick on Wimbledon type goal just wouldn't drop in the right place throw in for Argentina and they're taking an age over getting it back into play noted by the Polish referee who had a right wag in the of the finger in the face of Rodrigo de Paul he's thrown into the box hooked away for Australia by Moy headed back into the box and it'll bounce kindly for Matt Ryan and he's just going to clear from hands and hoof it downfield three up in green and gold Sutar stayed up there to assist the strikers headed out to this near side Australia can't get hold of it kept in play by Argentina and now it goes out of play for an Argentine throw and Lino Scaloni urging caution as he comes out to the edge of his technical area the Argentina boss ball thrown back into play by Tagliafico might break for Messi he's got Paul making the run to his right Martinez to his left sets Martinez away inside the area great save by Matt Ryan blocks it well Comes out to the right-hand corner of the box and DePaul. DePaul had Montiel making a run on the outside of him. But he just rolls it back into midfield for Enzo Fernandez. Montiel controls it well in actual fact on that far side. Gets it back from DePaul. Then gives it away to Aaron Moy. Driven up towards Jackson Irvine. Couldn't keep hold of it but it's helped forward up to halfway. Soutar can't win the header. DePaul keeps it in play on that far side. Finds Messi. Trying to get past Moy. Oh, he's got past Moy to the right-hand corner of the area. Looking for support. Messi in the area. Sets it for goal and puts it wide. Goal kick to Australia. Three minutes nearly of the added time have gone. Argentina still 2-1 up. Well, look what happens when you give him room. They've not given him much room all game. But now, because they're throwing bodies forward, Messi's showing what he's capable of. Behic, long ball downfield from left back. Suter at the edge of the area, headed away for Argentina by Nicolas Otamendi. Now De Paul looking to release Messi down the inside right again. Raul's has gone with him. Messi holding on to it on that right hand side, level with the Australian penalty area. Now just lays it off to Rodrigo De Paul. He gives it back to Messi. They'll just keep possession and frustrate Australia at this point. Little back heel gets the ball away inside the area, trying to pull it back to a teammate. Won't drop for Martinez. Comes out to Palacios. His shot is blocked inside the area. Now lovely feet in midfield from Enzo Fernandez. Palacios into the edge of the area. Messi twisting, turning, trying to get the shot in. Blocked. Comes out to Latoro Martinez. Plays a one-two with Messi. Goes for goal. Blocks. And then Messi on the follow-up. Couldn't adjust his feet, and it goes wide. Goal kick, 2-1, it stays. Oh, they've survived. Australia leaving four players up the pitch, so this is going to happen. You're just going to hope they miss like they are. They're still in it. Ryan's clear in Stanfield for Australia. Harry Souter looks for the flick on. Great header instead. 
gets it away for Argentina and again Suter's not winning anything and he's six foot six. Aaron Moy lobs it out to Karacic, the right back, just over the halfway line. Gonna hit a diagonal ball into the box, in it goes. Headed away by Otamendi. Quickly on the scene is Behic. He runs into the challenge of Moniel. Montiel gets it away to add a play for an Argentina throw. They're getting closer to victory, the Albi Celeste. We've got just over two minutes of minimum stoppage time to play. Argentina to Australia one. Whatever happens, Australia, well done. All the supporters must be proud of you. The nation must be proud of you. 2 0 down to Argentina, and they've dug in. And Argentina rang it on. Back heel is one back for Australia by Rowles. Now Irvine, just in front of the two centre halves, gives it back to Matt Ryan. Five golden green players downfield waiting for the ball to be sent out to that left hand side, and Goodwin gets the flick on. But across came Christian Romero. Drops in the central midfield. Rodrigo de Paul just, just tries to hoof it, spotting that Ryan was out of his goal, but he got it woefully wrong. 90 seconds of stoppage time remain. Australia need a goal. Argentina hanging on. Hit long downfield by Ryan. Sutar tries to win a header. It breaks for Fran Karacic. Karacic lobs the ball deep to the far post. Good win. Tries to hook it back across goal. McLaren heads it down. Will it drop for Kuol? That's cleared away, but only as far as Karacic. Midway point at the half. Passes to the edge of the area. Hustic gets to the byline. Pulls it to the back post. Goodwin wanted to volley it back across goal, but a dramatic clearance from Montiel. Behic wins it back. Goodwin level with the edge of the area. Ball in, cleared away by Otamendi. Australia win it back. It's with Craig Goodwin, chips it into the area, over the head, runs off for Kual! Oh. Brilliant save, Martinez! On oh. the right-hand corner of the six-shot box, Garan Kual fired it low. What a save from Emiliano Martinez. And once again, he drops on the ball to waste more seconds. 2-1 Argentina, just... Well, the ball has been crossed about six times on the bounce. Argentina have kept heading it out, back in the box. Eventually... Messi gives the ball away, dig to the back post, cool, lets it run past him, great first touch, only the goalkeeper to beat, Martinez sticks his leg out and saves it, nearly 2-2. Two -two. We played the seven minutes minimum, offside flag goes up against Palacios, free kick to Australia, there goes the full time whistle! Argentina are through to the round of 16 to face the Netherlands, but what a fight Australia put up to try to deny them. They looked home and hosed just shy of the hour mark when Julian Alvarez pounced on a mistake by Matt Ryan to make it 2-0 to Argentina after Lionel Messi celebrated his 1,000th senior appearance as a footballer with Argentina's first in the first half but back came the Socceroos an own goal from Fernandez gave them hope and right at the death Garan Kual on his way to Newcastle United the teenager had a chance from the right hand corner of the box but Villa's Emiliano Martinez blocked the effort and Australia go through and it's going to be another memorable clash with the Netherlands remember Bergkamp in the Stade Velodrome in 98, there's been many great clashes between Argentina and the Dutch. It'll happen again this week because the full-time score here at the Ahmad Bilali Stadium is Argentina 2, Australia 1.